Hey everybody, this is Danny with Insane in the Brine. Check us out at insaneinthebrine.com, also on Facebook as a page and a separate group. And I'm going to be putting more content here on YouTube, so I hope you'll check it out and hit the subscribe button. Today's topic is one that I'm just super pumped about. It really hits home for me because uh, making pickles was the first thing I ever did with my uh, homegrown produce and uh, things in the fermenting world. And uh, that's something a lot of people in recent years have been getting more interested in. And uh, they can be incredible. I think done right, homemade pickles can be better than anything you buy in the store. But uh, people often run into that problem of the, the pickle is mushy or it's too soft or it's not right. And so this is like my top 10 ways of making just that super crunchy, crispy pickle. And you may be already doing several of these things, but some of them are new for you. And uh, so with that, let's get into it. Well, number one is just most basic and essential, which is just picking the right variety of cucumber. Um, you may already know, but others may not be aware that there are specific varieties that are specifically meant to be pickled. And the large, uh, you know, you can call them salad slicer cucumbers that you find in the grocery store uh, are not generally good for making pickles. They're too big. The seeds are too big and uh, they're soft and they, they're great in salad, but they're just not gonna give you um, a really good result with pickles. And so you should look for pickling cucumbers, which tend to be smaller. They can sometimes have bumps on them, that's good. Um, my favorite uh, type of pickling cucumber is probably the Boston pickling, but there's many others, the National pickling, Kirby, that's a, that's a really popular one to see in the grocery stores. Um, and they're not quite as small as the Boston pickling, but they're still a reasonably good size. Uh, Carolina, Calypso, County Fair, and you can find all, you start researching online about different varieties, and, you know, you can grow from seed and that kind of thing, and you'll find a lot. And really, I think they're all good, and it's fun to just kind of try out different things. But if you're picking them out from the store, you may just see those Kirby's or, um, you know, one variety of pickling cucumber if any at all, and you may be, you need to go check out a open air farmer's market or something like that, or a new location to, to find uh, pickling cucumbers. But again, if you can grow your own, I mean, that's gonna be the best. Um, just pick them fresh right out of the garden. Um, but that brings us to number two, which is getting uh, cucumbers that are in the right condition for pickling. You know, if you're growing your own, then you'll find that they're just, they tend to be super firm. You can pull them right off the plant and get to pickling them the same day or the same hour. You can get them when they're young and they're small and they're very firm. They don't have any blemishes. They haven't been transported across the country at that point or dried out or anything. Um, so if you're having to buy them at a store, I mean, you really just want to be selective and look at each one that you're picking. And, you know, if it, if, it's wrinkly if it if it's cut if it looks dried out you know anything that doesn't look quite right with it avoid those and just get the best looking ones possible and if they all are tend to be you know not amazing looking I mean but you really want to make those pickles you can try them out some of the other techniques I'm going to give you are going to help to improve what you're what you're starting off with um, but just to bear in mind that whatever you start with is going to have a lot to do with what you end up with and so, as I was saying, if you have, whether or not you have great cucumbers to start with or just okay, the next step you can take is going to really help them out, especially the older cucumbers that might have been drying out or getting limp or something like that. And that is, number three, to put them in an ice water bath for several hours. And, uh, you know, even if it's 30 minutes, that's going to be better than nothing. You'll notice uh, some firming up of the pit of the cucumber. And, um, you know, sometimes mine might just be that long, but sometimes if I know I'm going to be busy all day and can come back to it later, they could be in that big bowl of, of ice water uh, for hours. And if they're going to be sitting out on a counter, you know, you can change up the ice, especially if they're going to be sitting out for five or six hours like that. Um, but usually that's not necessary if you just keep the whole thing in the fridge. So... Um, that's the idea there. The ice water is going to help. Basically, the, the cold temperatures 
kind of bring the cells of the cucumber closer together and firm the whole thing up. And also the water in there um, is hydrating the cucumber to some extent also. So for those reasons, the ice water bath is something that just really does a nice job on reviving some of those older or softer cucumbers. It really is something that it, it's nice for whatever cucumber you're starting with to do that. And besides that, another tip that I can mention, speaking of tips, it has to do with cutting off the blossom tip of the cucumber. And uh, sometimes that may be a little hard to tell, but it will be the end that is not sunken. It's not where the stem was. Sometimes this, a little bit of the stem will still be on the cucumber. And so we're talking about the other side of it. Um, but if you're not sure, then if the tip has, or if the um, stem has come off, then there'll be a kind of a sunken hole in the cucumber. But I'm talking about the other side. Now, if you end up doing a little cut on both sides, that's not the end of the world either. Um, I mean, we're talking about a very shallow cut just to cut off that blossom end or the blossom tip where the, f you may not be aware, but there's a, actually an orange flower that's usually growing out the end of that cucumber and by the time you see the cucumbers in the store that's that's gone but if you just cut away that very end tip it's about a sixteenth of an inch um, then that's going to remove what in in many cucumber varieties is a bit of an enzyme that can later down the road um, bring about some softening of the pickle so actually Many times I didn't do that removing of the blossom tip. People will make a big deal about it, but, I mean, sometimes I've just skipped it, and six months later my pickles are still very crunchy. So it's not necessarily going to make a huge difference, but it's one of those things just kind of better safe than sorry. Um, and then as far as a really long-term storage of pickles, like a year down the road, that's when you might notice that it really had been worth doing that that step. So that's number three. That's number four, the uh, blossom tip. Number five has to do with adding tannins. You always hear about, oh, you need sources of tannins for your pickles. Well, what are tannins? Tannins are astringent biomolecules found in, it can be the bark or leaves or fruit of various plants. So oak is known uh, to have a lot of tannins and there's a lot of wild oak trees around. Um, but there's many other sources, including things you, you may already be putting in your pickles. Um, bay leaf is a pretty good source of tannins, and putting one or two of those in your pickle jar, uh, something I always do anyway, because it's got a good flavor. So on top of that, it's also releasing, you know, certain compounds that help to keep uh, pickles crunchy. Um, another popular one is grape leaves. And uh, also something that I grow at home is horseradish. So the horseradish leaf is another good source. And then also some other things like um, any kind of berry leaf, raspberry leaf is a good one. I have that as well. So if you have access to any of these, uh, you know, you don't have to use all of them, but even using one of them. And at the very least, just putting some bay leaf in because it's so good in a pickle anyway. Um, those will help keep, keep things uh, firm moving down the line so uh you know and one other one that people talk about is sometimes even just using tea bags or making tea and using that as part of your brine and that will help some too it just depends on whether or not you'll like that flavor but it may be worth trying out uh let's see alum is a choice that some people pick which is an older method of keeping uh, pickles crispy that's spelled a-l-u-m you can usually find that in the spice aisle but there's some questions about how healthy that is. It's got aluminum in it. And so because there's just so many other sources you can find out there, that's not that difficult. I, would, I just personally don't use it, um, even though some people have said that it works well. Um, the Bailey, for example, I think will do an equally good job, and that's going to actually have a really good flavor to it. Uh, so moving along, number six, besides tannins, I mean, you need enough salt. We're talking about salt here for number six. Sometimes people will say, I don't get why my, why my pickles are so mushy. You know, I used my 2.5% salt brine. And, you know, in so many things in fermentation, 2.5% salt is great. It's perfect. It's not too salty, but it does a good job keeping things firm. And in the case of pickles, it's just not enough. I mean, it, it can work out, 
um, in certain environments. If it's not too hot, for example, we'll talk about temperature later. But um, typically, people will do between 4 and 5% of their brine as salt. So the saltwater brine, you know, is 4 or 5% salinity. And I usually do mine somewhere in between, like 4.5, 4.75. I notice when I'm right there at the 5%, it is a bit kind of too salty for me. Um, I mean, I still enjoy it, but I go a little bit lower than that, and I think it's perfect. Uh, so as far as, you know, making like low sodium pickles and keeping them crunchy, that is harder to do. I do have an article about how to do that on my website, so you might want to check that out if salt is a concern for you. But for other people who salt, they're not worried about the salt or, or it's okay, um, salt, just like tannins, helps to strengthen cell walls and therefore keep your pickle firm. And uh, so besides also keeping their pickles m firmer, uh, the salt is going to help to prevent anything bad from happening to the to the cucumbers, to the pickles, like you know mold or yeast growth as you're fermenting. Now, if you're doing vinegar pickles, uh, that's that's not really a concern um, per se. But uh, but like I said, um, as far as keeping it firm, it's still going to have a benefit, you know, with vinegar pickles as well. So you want to make sure that you have enough salt in your recipe. Number seven is fermenting your pickles in a cool location. Now, this is harder to do because, at least, you know, I'm here in Georgia. In the summer, it can get really hot. And uh, even in my house, you know, I'm not willing to spend tons of money on um, air conditioning. So it tends to run over 70 and maybe 72 or 74 and that makes it a little more challenging to keep a crispy cucumber but you just want to find the coolest possible place that you can store your pickles and that's whether they're vinegar or fermented um, there is usually a room temperature waiting period and uh, the cooler the environment you can do that in the better so if you have an area of your house that's closer to 70 that will be better the ideal temperature range for pickles in general uh, when you're doing them at room temperature is probably 64 to about 70 degrees and even up to 74 you can still have a good result but when you start getting into those temperatures of 76 78 80 maybe even like in the, here in the south if you're at work all day and you're not trying to run your AC too low I mean those are temperatures that over time are definitely going to be a big risk for having a mushy or soft pickle and so if you can keep things cooler than that that will definitely be better like I said the ideal range being like 64 to 70 and if you're a little over that and you should be okay um, but what I do is I'll keep my ferment time a little bit shorter if I know I'm going to be going over that kind of 70 or 72 degree benchmark so I might you know ideally I would ferment things at room temperature for like a week and then get them in the fridge but if I know it's getting later on in the summer and my house is generally a little warmer like it's 73 74 I might just have them out at room temperature for like five days and then get them in the fridge and it takes a little willpower but you you stay keep them in the fridge for you know three or four weeks and then they will get that great sour flavor without there ever being that risk for them getting now my piece of advice number eight is uh, similar or related to number seven but it's not just having things in the the right temperature but that you also want it to be in a in a place that avoids a lot of temperature fluctuation so even if you know the the place where you can ferment things is in a range of 62 to 70 but it's flipping from one to the other multiple times a day or for some reason then um, that can actually lead to other problems you know sometimes people say my cucumbers are hollowed out there's this weird you know hollow tube running through it and that can be from too hot of a temperature but it also can be from a lot of temperature fluctuation so if you can put things maybe not just on the kitchen counter but a, a cabinet or pantry someplace out of direct sunlight or out of uh, uh, sunlight coming into the room and uh, avoiding a lot of the fluctuation that's going to be something else that um, will help you out. Tip number nine is not overdoing your ferment time at room temperature so sometimes people will say 
oh, you're only going for a few days or a week. That's not enough time. You know, the real flavor comes from um, doing it for, a, you know, things at room temperature for a month. And that could be that true that the flavor is really going to sour in a way that if you keep it in the fridge, you might notice that full sour flavor is achieved after a couple months more in the fridge um, or a few months. But uh, people will keep them out for a whole month before refrigerating them. And that's something that, that occurs more in Europe and where the summer temperatures in a lot of places are not the same as here in Georgia or other places in the U.S. where they can be in the 90s and the 100s. They might be more like in the, in the 80s. And so they have a little bit more wiggle room with how long that they can ferment things. And it's possible people are going that long uh, here in the States as well. I just think it's when people give you that piece of advice to take that into consideration where they may be doing things or what their environment is may be different than yours. And really a month at room temperature in so many places that I can think of, you're going to end up with a, it could taste great, um, but it's going to be a really soft, mushy pickle. And so I'd rather... Um, you know, take several days to a week at room temperature, finish up the process in the refrigerator, and that might take longer because of the colder temperatures, but at least when you finally get to bite into that thing, it's going to be firm and crunchy and crispy and not mush. Now, the last one, number 10, has to do all about storing your pickles properly. So that means once you've gotten that super crunchy, crispy pickle, you want it to stay that way. Is it going to be that perfect pickle um, not just, you know, a month after making them in the fridge, but, but maybe six months or nine months or a year later, uh, if you're trying to make a lot of them and really have them last. So, um, for some of y'all, this, you may not be able to make your jar last that long. I totally get it. Um, I'm trying to have my own homegrown pickles pretty much all year long. And so, um, they got to last me until the next growing season. I still have some now from last year, 2019, and they're still quite crunchy. And so um, that all has to do with your storing methods. One thing you can do is as you've eaten some pickles and there's less in the jar, you can move them potentially to a smaller jar so that there will be um, less head space in the jar. That means less of that air up at the top. You want to limit that and it will also help keep everything submerged under that salt water brine. You know, once things are poking past that salt water brine, it's not the end of the world when they're stored in the refrigerator and you've already got the, the pickle you wanted. Um, you know, obviously when you're making your pickles, they need to be completely submerged under the brine um, during the room temperature fermentation period. But once you've gotten things in the fridge, if they're poking through a little bit, they're still going to last a long time, but the less of that exposure to air and being out of the saltwater brine, the more you can minimize that, then the better. A couple other final uh, proper storage technique tips I can mention is just don't put your hands in the jar. It's very tempting, especially if you're in pickles, just to reach in and grab the pickles when you want them. But if you can uh, use a fork or something else or some tongs and you're not getting any you know, contaminants or oils that are on your hands into the jar, then just as far as long-term storage, it's going to be better. Something to think about, and uh, some people swear by uh, straining their brine. So once they've got the pickle flavor that's perfect for them, they'll take their brine that's got all of those seasonings and maybe you know garlic and dill leaves and all these different things, the tannins we talked about, and they put that through a fine mesh strainer. So you've just got the sort of clarified brine that you're storing your pickles in, and people will say that that's a really good medium for keeping them in long term. And uh, actually, I don't bother with with all that. I like sort of the idea of keeping all the flavors in there um, but you can certainly try that and compare and see what you think and then lastly some of y'all may have a like we talked about a cold storage cellar area in your house or a wine cellar or something um, then maybe that stays in the 50s and if you've got that that is a great resource and you certainly can store your pickles there long term and they're not going to soften up on you anytime soon but on the other hand once you started opening things to eat them uh, then that ceases to be a good place to continue storing them. And once you've opened the jar to start consuming pickles and you're taking things out um, after the fermentation period is over, then I have to 
uh, recommend keeping them in the refrigerator as the best, you know, long-term storage method. So all those things said, I think you're in good shape now to make some real crunchy, crispy pickles. Hopefully I gave you some ideas that you'd never thought of before. If you have other ideas or techniques, please share them in the comments below or any other questions. Uh, I plan to be just getting out a quick uh, video of showing my process from start to finish of making pickles it should just last a few minutes so uh, stay tuned and we'll see you later bye bye